Gen 2 setting it up. How do you do it? Let's go. Open the box. Keep this card. It's the QR code for the instruction manuals and all the support. Remove the cure puck. Remove the plastic film. Slide this box out. Open the bottom. Remove the diffuser. Plug it in to the port. Remove the power adapter. If you're in Europe, you'll have adapters on the end. DC power supply. Older ones are five feet, newer ones are six feet. Plug that in. And there's a stylus in the box. This is in case you have sticky fingers, you don't want to touch the screen, or you can use the app. First, start by turning the cure puck on. Switches on the side. It's going to flash the cure puck logo. That said cure puck gen two, alerts you what cure puck generation you have. Now you have a disclaimer, click agree, that only comes up once unless you reset to factory defaults. Corner, you have a battery icon, tells you how charged the battery is. Next, you'll have a Wi-Fi indicator, which is not on right now because we're not connected to Wi-Fi. Next is an alarm icon. This is a clickable icon. You can click this in to see your alarms. Next is a settings button. You click this, it'll take you into the settings. This is a home icon. This doesn't take you anywhere. This is just showing you that you're on the home screen. There's a four digit unique ID. This is the unique ID to this cure puck. This is used for, if you have a fleet of cure pucks, identifying them in the app or for tech support. Next, you have the room parameters. We're at 75 Fahrenheit. 48 RH. You can toggle between Fahrenheit and RH in the settings. I'll show you that in a minute. Next, you have this green circle. This green circle indicates the chamber. We're on auto cure right now. The Gen 2 pucks out of the box come in an auto cure mode, set to cure to 60% RH or 0 0.60 water activity. We can change that and I'll show you that. Right now, the chamber is 52% RH, 626 ppm CO2. There's an icon below that turns the pump on and off. This is the manual on off button for the pump. Bottom corner is a play button. This play button initiates the timed burp. There's two modes in the cure puck. There's auto cure, which will burp off of the highs and lows of the RH. And then there's a timed burp, which will burp on an interval or a frequency. Right now it's set for every 24 hours for 60 minutes. So it's gonna count down. So now in 23 hours and 59 minutes, it's gonna burp for 60 minutes. I'll turn that off. We'll go to the settings screen. There's the network settings. You need the app installed in your phone, click Wi-Fi provisioning and follow the menus. This is home, takes you back to the home. And this is the advanced setting. Below you have CurePuck Gen 2, that's the generation of the CurePuck and the unique ID. Top corner you have the software version on the CurePuck. We'll click advanced. We'll start with a question mark. This is allows you to reset the factory settings if you wanna reset it. This QR code you can scan with your phone which will take you to the help screen or the help webpage. The same as this QR code that was on the top of the box. This will have all the videos you need for troubleshooting and support. Top corner we have auto cure mode. Auto cure mode has two options. You can cure based off of RH or VPD. Out of the box, as I mentioned, it's curing in RH mode. If I switch this to VPD mode, now it's set to one VPD, and I leave and go back to the home screen, we're now in VPD mode. The RH that was there before is now a VPD number. If you're setting to VPD, VPD of one is a good place to start, or a little lower, 0.90 is also another place that range typically gives good results. We'll leave it at RH for now. Every screen has a help menu that you can click to give you more insight in what's on that page. You can turn auto cure on and off, and now you can use the high and low set limits on a following screen. But in most cases, you'll want auto cure left on. Next is cure duration. Out of the box, it's set to off. We'll turn that on. So for the next seven days, it will burp on my timed interval. So when I push that play button on the previous home screen, that set it to burp every 24 hours for 60 minutes. It will continuously do that for seven days and then stop. CO2 limit. This is set to off. Turn that on. I'm gonna move this down to 1000. At the time of this video, we found that 1000 is a good place to start. We find that the CO2 climbs for too long and sits at too long of a high of a level. You don't get the best results. So we have the auto cure, the time duration, CO2 high limit. Now we have the high RH alert. This is if you're not using auto cure. You can set the high RH number to a safe place is to set it to 60. And then the low number, the safe place is to set it to 58. And now with auto cure off, as the RH in the chamber climbs above 60, it'll trigger the pump to turn on. It'll pump it down below 60 to 58. It'll turn it off. It's important that if you're using these upper and lower set limits that you have an RH in the room that is below the low set limit. So the RH in the room should be below 58 for this. We're turning this off because we're using auto cure already. Next we have air exchange frequency. So air exchange frequency is how often it will exchange the air in here on a timer. 
So that was the button you saw earlier when we pushed play, the timer started. If I change this to six hours and go back to the home screen and press play, it's gonna burp in six hours. Below that it says seven days, so it's gonna burp every six hours for seven days. And how long is it gonna burp for? It's gonna burp for 60 minutes. So this is an important number. You wanna make sure this number matches your chamber size. If you push the help button down below, it'll tell you one minute for every two liters. Now we use liters on here because it's hard to put all this information in gallons and liters in every measurement. So it's quite easy to conversion for most people. So if you have a hundred liter chamber, you want it to burp for 50 minutes. So now, if we go back to the home screen again, it's gonna burp in five hours and 59 minutes. It's gonna do that for 50 minutes and it's gonna continuously do that for seven days. Now you can turn that off and not use that at all and just use the auto cure feature. So the advantage of using the play button is it will ensure that you get a burp every day regardless if the CO2 climbs too high or if the RH climbs too high. The downside is if the RH in the room is really low, you're gonna drive dry air into your chamber. So for most people, they'll set this guaranteed burp every day for a short period, maybe the first three to five days. Right now we have it set for seven days. So we've done this screen, which was the auto cure screen. We've done the air exchange screen. Now we're on the alerts. This is room temperature alert. 71 is quite low, so it'll drive you crazy because it'll probably go off too much. I would set it something higher, something that's in the a range that is too high. So 75 is where I would start. This is the flower too wet. So if your flower, if the chamber achieves or passes 64% RH, you're in a, in a danger zone, it will alert you. The cure pocket will be trying to pump that moisture down, but if you were to load a chamber full of very wet flour and the moisture load was too much for the cure puck, it'll alert you that's gone beyond that threshold, and that's when you should open the chamber and take the flour out and dry it more. This is a safety. Room high RH alert. So if the RH in the room gets too high, I would set this higher to something like 63. Anything above 63, 64, 65, you're getting into a, a dangerous zone. I would set this, the 40 is the room RH low. So if the RH in the room gets too low, I would move this up to 50. Next screen, you have sleep mode. This allows you to put the screen in the sleep mode. Some people don't want the screen on. Here you can toggle between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Here is the live sensor data. So this gives you sensor data to two decimal places. So it's the full accuracy of the sensors. You'll have the chamber and room RH and temperature. You'll have your CO2, your chamber VPD, your room VPD, and your dew point of the chamber. Now, if you want to calibrate the CO2, you click the actual CO2 letters and the calibration screen comes up. We're not doing that now, but that's where it is. Now we're back to the main screen. To go home, home, we're back at home. Going to the alarms. I can clear the alarms, alarms are cleared. 